Alright, hello everybody. Uh, this is another episode of Hudson Bonsai. Today I've got my big American hornbeam in here and like I said, this tree is big. Uh, I can't even really get it all in the shot. Uh, this tree was collected uh, not this spring but the spring before and it was cut down to a stump. Uh, it's in this big huge, this is actually the bottom of a plastic uh, 55 gallon drum just because the root ball that I collected was uh, too big for any pot that I had. But, you know, this makes a pretty good container, I think. Uh, this thing has some big, beautiful spreading roots. Um, any growth that you see is, uh, you know, has grown in the last two years. You can see spots where I chopped this previously. Uh, that's where you get a little bit of movement in all these branches. Um, I'm not going to prune this back really far today because there are still quite a few green leaves and I'm going to let that, you know, all those resources just reaccumulate in the tree before I chop these branches back, but I will be cutting these back today. I'm going to concentrate kind of in this area and just there are a few branches I may take off. I'm going to add some pieces of wire to kind of set this, uh, you know, the structure of this tree a little bit better. I'm pretty sure that the side you're looking at now is going to be the front. Uh, this, the opposite side is also pretty interesting. I actually originally had this side in mind as the as the front when I first collected the tree, but I think this root is really kind of overpowering from this side and both of these large branches kind of emerge from the front. Uh, those are just, I, I didn't really eliminate any branches that uh, emerged from the main trunk up, up to this point. Uh, these are really the only branches that I got. Maybe at some point new branches will sprout, but I, I kind of think by then these ones will, uh, you know, the scale will never be correct. I think these are kind of the main structural branches that I'm kind of stuck with with this tree so I have to kind of come up with a way to make it work. Uh, I had this kind of interesting hollow here where at one point this tree was definitely attacked by borers and I just used some regular wood putty to fill all of the borer holes just so I could see if any of them were still occupied. You know eventually that borer has to have a place to, you know, <laughs> uh, get rid of its waste. So it'll, you know, poke a hole and you'll see where, you know, where it is. Um, and then I just used a mixture of dish soap, vegetable oil, and, uh, and water and sprayed it into those holes. And I'm pretty certain that I've killed all those borers that were in there. There was really maybe two that were alive uh, that I found anyway. And the tree hasn't seemed to uh, suffer at all from that treatment. Uh, like I said, the borers are definitely dead. So anyway, most of the work uh, is gonna take place, like I said, kind of in the, just the structure of this tree today. Alright, so I'm going to get started here on the, uh, on the work. Um, again, I think I, I have you pretty close to the front at this point. Um, one of the things I'm going to work on is this main cut here, this big stump cut that I made. I can see very clearly, you know, a, um, an area on here where the bark has died off. And even though this began to callus all the way around, I'm, you can kind of see where the callus in this area is still alive and growing. And over in here, it's just, it's stopped because, you know, this segment of the tree is, is died off. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, you know, that's expected. There's no branch above here. There's no reason, you know, it didn't grow a bud on this side. So there's no reason for this uh, 
bit of the trunk to be alive and transporting resources. So anyway, I'm going to take some of this off and I'm going to kind of soften this cut up a bit and try to get close to where it will begin to callus and, you know, eventually it may close, but it'll probably always be kind of a, you know, a hollow there. You can see places where I have made cuts and left room for dieback to see, you know, how far back I could actually cut this without risking, you know, damaging the trunk below. I can take a couple of those off right now. There's a branch right here that's growing just in towards the trunk. I, I don't see this ever being a useful branch. Cut it off and leave a little bit for die back. There's another one over here. This big cut over here, I'm going to try to start by removing some of it with a saw and then I'll nibble away at it with a knob cutter. Some people call American horn beam ironwood because the wood is so hard. Even though this wood is definitely dead, it is quite hard. I was getting so close to breaking out there and I slipped and I nicked this branch here. It's not too bad, but I'm going to put a little bit of cut paste, liquid cut paste on there where I nicked it right now. Give it time to dry before I'm working in that area anymore. And I don't 
don't think that's really going to be a problem long term. That little wound should heal up just fine. So like I said, now that I've cut the bulk of that off with a saw, I'm going to try to just kind of nibble away at it with my knob cutter. I'm not going to try to push this and go too far. I don't necessarily want to go to the point where I hit live tissue. I just want to kind of soften the look of that cut up a little bit just so this tree is that much nicer to look at. This is a, a tree in development. It's not going to look fantastic, but you know, the better a tree can look every day while it's sitting in the garden, the happier I am. there. That last bite I took, I did hit some green living tissue, so I'm not going to go any further in that direction. continue to work on this over time as the callus grows and as that woody tissue rots away. Again there, I can see just the edge of the little tissue there. So I don't want to push it any further. Like I said, just wanted to kind of soften the look of that and give it a chance to start healing into a, into a better shape. And I think that's enough.
I see another branch here that I'm going to take off. It's growing straight towards the front. It also, to me, is kind of in competition with uh, this branch, just as far as the location that it emerges, because to me this kind of seems like, even though that is the leader, that those two branches are just existing too close. That's a really fine, small branch. This is a nice, thick, semi-developed branch. So I'm going to keep that one. So the next thing I'm going to do here is try to get some of these larger branches into uh, just a better position for what the design of this tree is going to be. I, I want to keep the branches kind of emerging upwards, but then kind of flattening out and spreading out. So I'm going to use some guy wires to kind of pull these branches down into a position that I kind of want them in. Come around to the front here. Thinking Sorry, I'm going to try pull this one this way. Uh, it's generally really not overly advisable to pull a guide wire to the uh, container itself. It's better to pull it to a point on the tree. But this particular tree has a huge root system. It's well established in this pot. and. Compared to the size of the branches that I'm moving, I'm really not worried about that putting any stress or pressure on the root system of the tree. That's why with a smaller tree, you don't really want to do that because then you're, you're pulling, basically transferring that force to the trunk and to the root system against the pot. That's why it's better to anchor from a branch back to the tree, whether it's around a root or a, uh, another branch or stub or something on the tree, then there's no pressure being put on the root system. But like I said, this, this tree, I, I'm not concerned that I'm going to be putting any kind of stress on the roots of this tree. I'm going to start with some thinner galvanized wire and see if that will get this done. going to use some clear tubing to protect the branch. Look.
leave that one there for now. And like I said, I will be pruning these back pretty far. Um, you know, like this branch. Really, eventually, I don't know if this branch here is even, it'll maybe be this branch that actually takes over. So this long straight portion here, I'm, I'm not really concerned with because this, this won't be here forever. I have some movement here and then up and into this branch. Like I said, th this will probably eventually be what I cut this branch back to. Um, obviously I put this wire out here, so that's not gonna happen this fall. You know, I'll, I'll cut this back into here maybe. Um, and then it, it'll be maybe later uh, next year this left stiffened up enough that I can cut this off, but I'm not sure. This branch over here, you can see it already had a guy wire on it. That branch was growing very close to the trunk. I put this little wire on in the spring just to really to pull the foliage of this branch out and away from the tree so it wasn't just clogging up uh, you know all this fine branching that I have here. front here. There'll be more in this area. Yeah, I'm using a little piece of rubber tubing just to protect the bark of the tree. Yeah, I'm going to lay this out pretty flat. This branch a bit as well.
going to see if there's another branch there that I'd like to move. For now, I think those smaller branches are just fine right where they are. Just a piece of three millimeter wire I'm using here. I anchored it to the main branch, just a short piece. It's another situation where this will probably be cut back to this branch eventually. And this straight section here really won't be used anyway. So I'm trying to position this branch, uh, you know, as if it were the only branch there. I think that's going to do for now. We'll try to move this branch. I think that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, with guy wires, it's going to be very easy for me to kind of adjust that level a little bit if I think that I need to. So, as you can see, I ended up taking this tree a lot further than I was talking about in the beginning of the video. I just kind of made the decision that all that foliage that I said I was going to leave for a few days but until it dropped off naturally and then cut it off was probably not going to end up putting resources into the uh, you know the bits of the tree that I really needed to keep. I, I just kind of saw that uh, this tree was further along than I originally thought it was and you know I could really work more on you know some kind of final structural setting on this thing and move it into uh, refinement next year. So that's what I did. I put a lot more wire on than I originally thought I was gonna, but I'm really happy with the results. I think this tree has developed really nicely over the past two years. Uh, it still does have a long way to go, but it's gonna, you know, really start to look like a refined tree uh, through the growing season next year. Anyway, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.